Okay, that was a few of y'all. Y'all ready for the word today? Yeah. Amen. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence. God, we thank you that, Lord, you are here. You said wherever two or more are gathered, you are in the midst. Holy Spirit, we thank you, and we welcome you to have your will in, the, in your way in our midst. You have a way of speaking to every person like they're the only one in the room. Would you do that, Holy Spirit? Would you visit us and, and, and touch our hearts and transform us from the inside out? Don't let us leave the same way we've come. Transform us, and we'll give you the honor, the praise. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. I step back. Holy Spirit, step forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We've been talking about the weapons of our warfare. What? The weapons of our what? Warfare. The weapons of our what? Warfare. Warfare. Amen. I need a little more base. The weapons of our what? Warfare. Okay, I hear my brothers now. Amen. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. I'm in the amplified version. Amen. Because I want a great amplification of the, of the Greek words in here. So listen to this and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And I'm going to recapitulate real quickly what we've gone over the last two weeks. Amen? And let's, I'm, I'm telling you, look for God to speak to you on today. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of flesh and blood. But they are mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction. Everybody say destruction. destruction. The destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments. Everybody say arguments. arguments. And theories. And say and theories. And, theories. and say and reasonings. And every proud, come on, every proud, every proud. And, lofty thing, and lofty thing, you stop there, that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. Now, we, we went over, there's a lot of lofty things that are trying to distract people from the kingdom right now. Let's keep going. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ. The Messiah, the anointed one, being in what? Readiness. Everybody say readiness. readiness. Say neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. It's, time to get ready. it's time to get ready. It's time to give some punishment. Okay, let's look what it says. It says being in readiness to punish every insubordinate for his disobedience. When your own submission and obedience as a church are fully secured and complete. What does it say? Get in place so you can help others get in place. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You're blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. You know, it's hard to get the beam out of somebody else's eye when you've got a log in yours. Yeah. So get right so you can help others do right. Amen? Yeah. Let's keep going. We define stronghold as any destructive system. Again, the definition of a stronghold, any destructive system or way of thinking that preoccupies the mind and bring a person under its control. You can have a stronghold of fear in your life where you fear everything. You can have a, a, a fear of failure. You can have a stronghold of doubt where you doubt everything. You can have a stronghold. Come on, Nate, give me some other strongholds we talked about. Fear, doubt, what else? Pride. pride. Where, you, where you're so proud you, can't, you, can't, you don't want to hear anybody else. What else? Come on, talk to me. Jealousy. Jealousy. Envy. Envy is like, you know, not, that's worse than jealousy. That's a step above because it's like not only do I hate that you have it, but, but I want it. And I'll destroy you to get it. Come on, what else? Stubbornness. Strong old stubborn, well, you're just stubborn. You know, you, just, you, tell, you even started telling people, I'm hard-headed. I got to hear it two or three times. No, you're not. 
You got the mind of Christ. And Christ is not hard headed. Are y'all with me? Start confessing the word over your life. What else? What else? Rejection. Some people have strongholds of rejection. They come in the room, they think everybody's talking about them. Stronghold of rejection. Are you with strongholds of abandonment? You think everybody's going to leave you? I was just going to the bathroom. I'm not leaving. Are you with me? Where are you going? Rejection. Abandonment. Come on, what else? Talk to me. Selfishness, Selfishness and greed. What was back there? Sluggish. Sluggish. Lazy. Yeah. Using them King James words. Yeah. Sluggish. Sluggards. Sluggards. No. Lazy. Procrastination. You know you got two weeks to plan, but you keep saying, I got time, I got time. Till it's like 12 hours before it's due. Procrastination. Somebody tries to help you plan it out. I got this. Pride. Well, what you need to do is just do an hour a day. I got this. Pride. You're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pride. You're lazy. And you're proud in your laziness. Don't help me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you had somebody do that. You had somebody do that. I know you don't do it, but you had somebody do that to you before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They say they tell you in the night, and they smiling. Mm-hmm. Shut up, leave me alone. I want to stay lazy. Well, give me some more. Talk to me. Negativity, just critical, critical about everything. Down in spirit. Oh, I got a bonus that you probably spent it by the night's over. I got a new man in my life. It ain't gonna nothing gonna happen. I got a godly wife. Ah, oh, she wait, wait five years. She's gonna be like mine. Just negative. I'm out of debt. That won't last long. Are you with me? Just Debbie down. All strongholds. Now, we struggle with that. We can't seem to overcome a stronghold. Another definition is something that has a strong hold over you. Amen? Say, it's ending today. It's ending today. For my family, it's ending today. For my life, it's ending today. For my marriage, it's ending today. Are y'all with me? For my children, it's ending today. Amen. Some of us are negative. We don't want to be negative. You don't even realize it. People around you, they let you get away with it. But you, you, ever, you ever been get around the wrong people and they, just, they tell you about yourself? They be like, why are you so negative? Well, I'm a realist. No, you negative. Because the same energy that you speak, something negative, you can speak something. See, the one first thing you got to do is you got to expose the stronghold. They're like cockroaches. You got to turn the light on. Now, if you're going somewhere and the cockroaches are walking in the daytime, you got a problem. How many know what I'm talking about? Because that means you have, what, <laughs> infestation. <laughs> you don't got one or two. I mean, they're looking at you and they be like, hey, what's up? You got my seat. Are you with me? And demons are the same way. If they come in and they just waving at you, then you got some problems. Are you with me? You beyond, are you, are you with me? The devil's got a fortress. <laughs> but see, demons can't possess a believer. They can't oppress a believer. Because you're given over, you're bought for a price by the Lord Jesus Christ. But they only can come in by doors that we leave open for the enemy. Pride, that's an opening. Doubt, that's an opening. Unbelief, that's an opening. You can, be, you can have faith for everybody else, but when it comes to your marriage, you have no faith. Oh, yeah, God's going to bless your marriage. My, oh, man, God can't. You don't know my. You don't know my wife. You don't know my husband. Opening the door. Are you for confusion to come in? Are you with me? Speaking that faith, the same energy. You say, all hell is breaking loose, Pastor. 
You still say, man, look, I have a godly man. He ain't acting nowhere godly. I have a godly man. I see him filled with the Holy Ghost. I see him standing in the Word. Wife just being hateful. I see her as a woman of God. She's anointed. Speaking truth. You got to speak, call those things that be not as though they were. Amen? So we said the devil weapons are what? Deception. Sin. Condemnation. Let's say it Deception. Come on, say it together. Deception. Sin. Condemnation. Fear. Discouragement and doubt. Now we said he has little weapons compared to God's big weapons. Every sin comes, forms out of that, that level of deception. He came, his mission statement is to kill, steal, and destroy. But God, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life more what? Abundantly. How many know that's bigger than what you see? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Let's look at this. See, the weapons, we, got, we went through three weapons already. Amen? And we started on the fourth. And we're going to stay on the fourth for a little bit because it's one that uses all of these together. Amen? The first weapon was what? The what? And it directly attacks what? Deception. Deception. When the enemy tried to come to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, so why don't you turn this bread into stone? He said, man shall not live by what? 